Okay, so here we are after lunch, and we're going to go through some partnership exercises. But before we do that, I have to uh, teach, or in some cases, review for you a math concept that's going to come up frequently when we're discussing the uh, idea behind recursion. And one of the more common examples that are given is factorials. And uh, you know that in computer science, this symbol which is called the exclamation point by your English teacher. It's called the bang operator in computer science, and it means not, right? And what does it mean in math? It means factorial. What does factorial mean? OK, so <clears throat> that means that if I have like 3 factorial, this is equal to 3 times 2 times 1. So this would be equal to 6. Likewise, if I have 5 factorial, this would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Notice it stops at 1, because if you get to 0, then the whole thing will come out 0. So this one here would be 6, 24, I think, is that 120? So that's how that works. Now, the only other thing you need to know is that 0 factorial is not 0. What is it? Who can tell me? What is it? Yes, miss? No, it's got a definite value. Yes, sir. It's equal to 1. Now, if you don't know any of this, that's perfectly OK, because the place you are most likely to learn it, in what course? Usually AP stats is the one. Factorials are often given as one of the most common examples of um, recursive algorithms being easy to, uh, to apply. And so what we're going to do is the first example. We have four examples to get through today. Hopefully, we'll get through all of them. So when I get you together with your partner, you need to push your desks together so that they're touching like this. And then you need to decide among your partner and you, one of you will be the paper pusher and the other one will be the writer. So decide right now who will be the paper pusher and who will be the writer. Are we all good? Everyone have a partner? OK, so here's what you do. Look, now the person who is writing, the person who is writing, you want to position the paper here so that your, you and your partner can both see what's going on, OK? So don't position the paper in the center, because then your partner won't be able to see what's going on. Now, here's how this works. I, I'm going to give this piece of paper out to every partnership. So between you and your partner, you get one of these. And you notice that it's been cut like this, but not completely finished cutting. So the first person that you do who is the paper pusher is you finish cutting it like that. And you just cut off all the pieces, OK? Now, there's one of them that's slightly different from the others because one of them has the problem on it. The other ones all have just the factorial method. They're, they're identical. They, they each have the factorial method. The code is written for you. We're not writing the code for this exercise. We're, imp we're uh, going through the process of seeing what happens when recursion takes place. So uh, let me just hand these out right now. One paper per pair. One paper per pair. OK, so this is the, this is the paper that I just gave you. And what you want to do, the paper pusher, first thing they have to do is separate uh, where it's been cut. Just, just finish cutting them up so that you have four of them. And then the first one right here has the problem statement on it, factorial of three. And then you can see the, these, these methods are identical. So you can use the definition of factorial, definition of factorial, definition of factorial. Here's the base case. Here's the recursive case. One of the things I forgot to mention during lunch, before lunch, one of the things I forgot to mention before lunch is that, factor, uh, is that recursion is hard for human brains to comprehend. You can already see that, right? It's kind of mind-blowing. Now, <coughs> recursion falls into two general categories. There's tail recursion and there's non-tail recursion. Of those, tail recursion, which I will explain in a minute, is much easier to understand than non-tail recursion. Tail recursion is when the recursion only happens in the last line. You can see here. In this factorial method, it's recursive because it calls itself, but it's tail recursive because the recursion happens right at the end. You see that, right? That's the only place it happens. So it turns out that of the two cases, tail recursion versus non-tail recursion, this is much easier for your brain to process what's happening. And that's why we're starting with the tail recursive case. Later on, we're going to look at some other cases where it's non-tail recursive, whether the recursive call either doesn't happen at the end or it happens multiple times. That becomes non-tail recursive. That's much harder to figure out what's going on. OK, so here's what you do. <clears throat> the paper pusher 
keeps the stack of four or five of these things on their desk. And each time the writer needs another copy, you give them a copy. That's basically your job to manage the paper. Now, what happens first is the person who is the writer, the person who is the writer, looks at this thing and says, factorial three. So you're going to start writing stuff. Let me show you what you're going to write here. So the first thing you're going to write is you're going to put the three everywhere there's an N. See that? Everywhere there's an N, you're going to replace it with three. So you're going to go over here, you're going to say, oh, that's a three. Oh, this is a three. And you're going to say, is three less than or equal to one? So then you come down here and you say, oh, n is 3. And then you say, now what are you going to put over here? N, n minus 1. What are you going to put there? 2, like that. And you're going to say, oh, now I have to call factorial again. And every time you need to call factorial, you turn to your buddy and say, give me another factorial. And your, your buddy will hand you another piece of paper that has factorial on it. Typically, it'll be this piece of paper right here. So when she gives it to you, you take this new piece of paper and you put it right on top of the old piece of paper. Now, here's the thing. What are you going to put in for n for the next piece of paper? 2. You can see that, because it's calling factorial of 2. You see that? So then you put in a 2 here. And then you say, is 2 less than or equal to 1? And you say no. So then you put in here 2. And then you put in here 1. Like that, right? And guess what? You need another factorial. So you turn to your buddy who is your paper pusher. Ask for another factorial. She gives you another factorial, you put it right on top, and then what are you going to put in for uh, n here? One. one. So you'll put in a one there, and you're going to put in a one there, and so when you put in the one, you're going to say, if n is less than or equal to one, is it? Yeah. It is. So you're going to return a one. So when you return this one, you need to remove the current piece of paper and plug in the one where the previous call was because that's what it returned. So you're going to cross out this part right here and put a 1 there, because that's what the next method returned, the next call. So you're going to be stacking papers on the way into the stack and removing papers on the way out of the stack. And if you do this whole thing correctly, what should the factorial of 3 come out to be? 6. Six. So you work through that exercise. Now listen, here's, what, here's the process. You go through this whole thing, you do it, right? After you're done, the person who pushed the paper, probably didn't do their fair share of work, would you agree? They have to take out their computer, write the problem on BlueJ, and do it for real, and make sure you got the same answer. And we're going to do this four times today. The first one is factorial, then I got three other problems where it's not so obvious what's going on, and it's much harder because some of them are non-tail recursive, but we'll start with the easy one for now. Please get to work on this.